Thank you all for being here tonight. We appreciate you. And as always, we give thanks to our to Jesus Christ, yeah. giving us our life and our health and our strength, allowing us to live in such a blessed and prosperous land. Well, guys, tonight is the cultivation of a lot of doggone hard work, a lot of hard work and commitment, not just by me and my team uh, and our campaign staff, but by a whole cadre of people across the state who believe in us, believe in our message, believe in our vision, and want to see North Carolina go in the right, in the right direction and did the hard work it took to get through this uh, primary. So thank you, each and every one of you. We were able to withstand withering attacks from our opponents, uh, all of which were baseless. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we firmly stand by what we believe in, who we are, and our story. Because our story is a great story. Our story is a story that's deeply rooted in North Carolina. It is the story of North Carolina. A story of being the underdog, a story of being the person who had to come back, the person who, who, the, the person who had to overcome obstacles to see a better day, just like North Carolina herself. You all know my story. Number nine of 10 children, growing up in an extremely poor household. I'm looking at right now, I'm looking at my brothers out here. I've got brothers out here in the audience that I'm looking at them. I've got guys out here that are not my blood brothers, but are practically my spiritual brothers that have been through the same things that I've been through. They've seen the days of poverty. They've seen the days of hunger. They've seen the days of struggle. But like North Carolina herself, we've risen past that to see a better day. And we stand here on this stage now, ready to move forward, ready to move forward into that better day. And I would be remiss right now if I did not give credit to the person I believe who is most responsible for my success. Other than my beautiful wife, Yolanda, who's standing here on the stage with me. The woman who I credit with making me the man that I am is my mother, Eva Mae Robinson. A woman who was left in 1979 with five children in her house. And she had a choice between welfare and work, and she chose work. And she worked her fingers to the bone to take care of her children and set a standard in her life. I would not be standing here right now if it was not for her. In fact, I am standing on her shoulders right this moment. I stand on the shoulders of my mother and all of those who came before me who laid the groundwork that made it possible for me to stand here as the first black lieutenant governor and possibly the first black governor of North Carolina. Now I'll tell you this, right in this general election, we're not gonna allow these folks to drag this campaign into the mud. Those who wanna go into the mud, feel free. Where we're going is we're going towards the substantive issues that all North Carolinians face. The things that will make North Carolina great, that will take her to her next level of success. What are those things? Those are those important things. Education and our economy. Those are the things we're going to focus on. When it comes to our, our economy here in North Carolina, my vision is to see to it now that we've come out of the economic doldrums of 2010 and prior, where we were $3.4 billion in debt to the federal government and were furloughing state workers and teachers didn't get a raise for six years, to now a, a day where we see through Republican leadership that we now have a $5 billion surplus. We're giving teachers a raise with raises, state troopers raises. Everybody wants to come here and do business. We're the number one business destination, two years running. But I would submit to you now the vision, the call, the mission is to grow this state, to grow its economy, as we like to say, from Murphy to Manio, so that every part of the state has economic opportunity. I believe the way that we do that and sustain that is by having a great education system and making reform reformations in our education system, removing agendas from the classroom and getting back to classical education, reading, writing, and mathematics, civics, history, and all those things that teach our children how to be great citizens of this constitutional republic, teaching them the values and giving them the skills they need 
so that they not only succeed inside of the classroom, but they take what they've learned in that classroom, outside of that classroom, and succeed in life. That is the goal. So, folks have heard a lot about me throughout this campaign. Much of it has been false. Those of you all who know me know who I am. I am a person who has a deep love for the state of North Carolina. Why? Because the state of North Carolina has been doggone good to Mark Robinson. From the time I was a little poor kid growing up in, right here in Greensboro, over off of Logan Street, to the time I was a young man in the United States military, to the time when I was a young father, struggling to take care of my family, to this very moment standing on this stage as the Republican nominee for governor of this great state. This state has been doggone good to me. And now it is time for me to repay the debt of gratitude that I have to this great state and its people. I look out across this group of people who, stand, who are standing in front of me now and I see the struggles and successes that symbolize North Carolina. I look at each and every one of you and I see folks that I worked in furniture with. I see some people that I worked in the restaurant business with. I see some people out there that probably know somebody from Canton or Asheboro where their industry was shut down and their jobs were lost. We're here for you. We understand you. You see, I have an opponent that doesn't understand any of that. I have an opponent who doesn't understand what it's like to be at work and have the boss man come and take you to a room and sit you down and tell you, we're moving this plant to Mexico, and there's nothing you can do about it, and now you have to go find another job. I know the sting. I know the sting of the bad federal policy that causes that, and I'm here for the people of North Carolina for it. Now, people ask me, what's the difference between you and your Democratic challenger? The answer is simple. I'm part of a winning team. He's part of a losing team. What do I mean by that? His team had us $3.4 billion in debt to the federal government. His team had us furloughing state workers because we couldn't afford to pay them. His team had teacher pay frozen for six years. My team turned that around, built a $5 billion surplus, made us the number one business destination in the nation two years running, and has set us on a course to make North Carolina an absolute economic superpower. The, the differences could not be more clear. We have a choice in November. Return back to the days of 2010 and the economic doldrums that plagued us, plagued us or move forward into an economy that spans from Murphy to Manio. I'm sure the people of North Carolina will make the right choice. Now, before I leave the stage, I'd be remiss if I didn't say a few thank yous, personal thank yous. Uh, one of the big thank yous I want to say, of course, in this is my wife. My wife has been with me by my side, and those of you all have never run a campaign, you know. All right, now we are.